I'm live. We're here. Hi, everybody. Man, welcome, welcome, welcome. Happy Tuesday night. Sorry, my hair's a little funky, but there's plenty of shots for you right off the bat. Hi, guys. <laughs> Hope y'all are doing well on this October 9th evening. I'm happy to be hanging out with you all so far. Um, yeah, glad glad you uh, glad you guys are here, man. Can't believe it. Uh, so as you can tell by the um, by the title of this episode, I'm going to be drinking nothing but uh, single barrel picks, and they're not necessarily all going to be store picks, but they are going to be single barrel picks. So <clears throat> I am going to start off. Um, Yes, I know it's always funky, and it's a. I am in the process of actually um, growing it out, um, so it's gonna look funky for a little bit, and that's just kind of how it is. So sorry, Joe. Um, anyway, so I am going to start out with a Buffalo Trace Liquor Barn pick into the old Glen Karen, and uh, we're gonna get things kicked off. Everybody, yeah, growing it out. Mm -hmm. um, thank you all so much for being here. I just want to say it's incredible that you guys um, want to spend time with me uh, on these uh, Tuesday nights. So I am trying to go through and say hello to everybody as quickly as I can. Uh, Brian is here. Hello, Brian. Chris, big feats. Hello. Monica, my friend, welcome in. Um, Joseph. Thank you for being here. Let's see who else I said Joe already. Um, <clears throat> if you're here, let me know. I would love to say hello to you. And yeah, hi John. Yeah, uh, no product tonight. I actually have a little bit in. It just you can't you can't really tell because it's getting so long that it's starting to fall to one side. So is what it is. Is what it is, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> What's everybody drinking tonight? Yes, I am going to drink as well. Cheers. What's everybody drinking tonight? Hope that you guys are um, uh, having a good week so far. We are Granddad 114. Joe, I knew you were drinking. Oh, Louie, welcome in. I knew you were drinking Blanton's Old Forester Signature. Very nice. I'm so happy that you guys are hanging out with me. I am so pumped for this episode. I picked up a couple of really good single barrel picks this weekend that I am really looking forward to getting into <clears throat> and talking to you guys about. First and foremost, of course, tomorrow is new episode day. We have a great episode coming out tomorrow, of course, again with Chad and Sarah of It's Bourbon Night. And then my pops is going to be sitting in with me as well. Knock Creek Single Barrel Rive. Very nice. Wild Turkey Rare Breed Barrel Proof. Yes. Love me some rare breed. I uh, just finished a pour of a great 1792 store pick. Thanks to the wonderful Monica for the tip on that one. Monica is wonderful. Matt, I just picked up that uh, Bellmead Cast Strength Reserve, too. I had it at Bourbon and Beyond and at Southern Whiskey Society and loved it and figured that I needed to have a bottle of it. No, not brown paper bags tomorrow night. Um, I'm going to go ahead and tell you guys what that episode's going to be because <clears throat> it is really cool and you know i was kind of teasing it a little bit so what happened was my dad and you're going to hear more about it tomorrow my dad went into my grandmother's liquor cabinet recently and found all of these old dusty bottles from the 80s and 90s and so some stuff in there is older than i am some stuff is just a little bit younger than i am but not by much. So you guys will be able to hear all about that tomorrow morning. And then we should have, yeah, I know I keep playing with my beard and I'm, <laughs> I never did set forth the, uh, the rules for the uh, live stream drinking game, but I'm, I'm going to figure that out this week and actually might, um, Hey, what's up, Jason? Um, might get that kind of sorted out this week as well. And there's the beard again. Dang it. See, that's the problem is I have all these little ticks that you guys are going to like, you can't, I, I got to be really careful with it. I got to be really careful with it. Anyway, um, 
So Chad also filmed a little bit of this episode that's coming out tomorrow. I'm going to have that available, that footage available um, on my Patreon at patreon.com slash my bourbon podcast. Uh, if you want to go and check that out and I highly encourage you to do so. We have a bunch of audio content as well from the bourbon and beyond festival, which was of course a lot of fun. I've talked ad nauseum about, but I just wanted to go ahead and get that out of the way. <clears throat> um, other thing, next week's episode, I'm going to keep a little bit secret because it's a little bit of a, it's different. It's a little different and you'll know why when it, when it comes out next week. But then the other thing is that two weeks from tomorrow is our big 50th episode, one year spectacular. And I am super psyched about it. I'm going to be having, um, will you be on it? <laughs> I, okay. So sometime in the future, I would like to have a, <clears throat> an episode where we do like, a whole bunch of people get together like that are part of this community and hang out and everything, um, you know, and, and get everybody on an episode. Cause I think that would be a lot of fun. Um, Joe, but that, I know what you're talking about and that's going to be in a few weeks actually. So maybe, maybe it might be next week. I'm not sure yet. Um, anyway, so enough business. Um, enough business for now at the very least because i want to drink some bourbon i want to to drink some bourbon and this is a very good pick from liquor barn they typically have great buffalo trace picks um brad is phenomenal his palate is great and i am a big fan of stuff that he puts out the only thing that i've had from liquor barn that i haven't liked pick wise was a Weller 107 pick from last year that was just bad. It was nothing but heat and no flavor, and everything was just not good about it. Liquor Barn Eagle Rare pick is insane. I have not had that actually. I would like to have that though. Mm. I just wanted to get the lower proof one out of the way real quick because I have some good stuff lined up and um oh the first b tech of the year has landed huh north carolina so somebody in north carolina has found the first 2018 buffalo trace antique collection bottle lucky ducks i am of course going to be on the lookout for the 2018 william larue weller because the 2017 was phenomenal and i am super excited about it isn't there a double eagle rare coming out? I think so. It's called like double eagle very rare or something like that, but I don't know if that's actually still the case. I know that a label for that was approved by the TTB, but I don't know if that was anything that's actually going to come to fruition. Um, have you had the recent Four Roses Barrel Strength from Liquor Barn? No, I have not. I saw it the other day, and I didn't get a chance to pick it up. Really won a 2018 George T. Stag? Yes. Yes. Anything from the antique collection, of course, except was it, is it the Sazerac or the Handy this year that's not supposed to be very good? I don't know. Anyway, this is a bottle of Elijah Craig from BHG. So the folks over at OBC Kitchen were a big part in picking this. My good friend Iverson uh, and our friend Justin as well, who work over there, they are always on these picks um, pretty much across the board and love their palate, love what they do. And um, yeah, um, big feats. Of course we care. I'm happy you're back. Really want the 2018 WLW B-Tag. Trying for four years to get any B-Tag. So frustrating. Yes. Yes. Um, yeah, 11 people watching and four likes. Hit that like button, y'all. Please, it helps. Uh, yeah, I think it is the handy that's not that great this year. But, oh well. It happens. It happens. <laughs> for only 950 bucks. Yeah, I saw recently last year's handy in the wild for 450 I think the guy wanted it 
wanted for it. And I, he was like, yeah, I could probably come down to 350 on it. And I said, no. <laughs> this is a great nose. Very cherry heavy. The alcohol is a little forward on it as well, but it's still good. Actually, I'm going to take a sip of water before I get into it. So one of the things that I really love about single barrel picks is that they are <clears throat> so commonly taking what works about a profile on a bourbon and picking out little things that you might not normally find on it and bringing them to the forefront. And that's what, from if I remember correctly, that's what this particular one does. Um, is there an age statement on, on this one? No, I don't think so. But I would bet, I would bet this is a 10 year. I'll, I'll have to, um, I'll have to ask Iverson about it later. Did I pick up the Four Roses single barrel barrel proof Brent Elliott selection at the distillery? No, I did. Oh, hey, my dad's here. Um, no, I did not. But I did pick up a single barrel that was picked by Brent Elliott. That is the 100 proof, which I am a fan of and will be trying in a little bit, too. So, um, Sip Whiskey has a pick that's uh, nine years. Okay, cool. cool. Yeah, dad's here. Everybody say hello, Dad. I was right about this pick. Yeah. So it definitely has that great, well-rounded Elijah Craig flavor to it, where it's just this beautiful play with caramel and these baking spices. And that really amazing, like, snickerdoodle cookie flavor that I typically get. Um, but it introduces more of the barrel char. And I think that's what I like the most about it, is that it's kind of like a barrel-proof Elijah Craig without the high proof. It has those flavors. And I just think, I think that BHG, I think that OBC does everything right with their picks. I mean, I don't think I've had, I, I haven't had a bad one. I haven't had a bad one from them yet. Was that a beard touch? It was a very light one. Yes, I realized that as soon as I... See, here's the problem is that as soon as I start like going, oh, you know, this is, you know, how the drinking game's going to go or whatever. Um, yes, Dad, everybody should listen to the... <laughs> to it tomorrow. Um, hi, hey, Brett. Um I, I start I start to just get I, I start to become really self-aware of everything that I'm doing. So it's fine. It's fine. Are we drinking on the beer touch now? I thought it was the hair tease. It's it's both. It's both, actually. Sorry, Jason. Dag gummit. This is a great pick. It's so good. Oh. I just realized I have two turkey products lined up, too. We'll talk about that when it gets there. Um, Elijah Craig, yes. Elijah Craig barrel pick, too. Um, need a refill? Yeah. Okay, yeah. I think it is probably easiest if we just go all or nothing. Um, Dad, what'd you open tonight, then? You, you tease? What was the age statement on it? I said I wasn't sure, but I think it's probably nine or ten years. I would lean more probably towards the, the tenure. That's kind of how um, Iverson's palette goes. Um, oh, Jefferson's Pritchard. Of course. Of course. Great bourbon. Dad actually talks about it on the episode tomorrow, too. Um, as usual, the good stuff is unavailable to us here in Washington State. Sorry, Joseph. Thanks for supporting the show, though. Speaking of supporting the show, if you guys are in here and you um, are patrons of the show, I just want to say thank you. I am so blessed and humbled by you guys wanting to support little old me who does this 
sometimes ridiculous and out, out there podcast once a week about bourbon and you guys are just the best i mean really i'm so touched by you all um but i am gonna start because it we are getting to the point where we have significant numbers or semi-significant numbers um of patrons uh for the show so i am going to um start thanking patrons every episode starting in a couple of weeks so yeah um refilled on my elijah craig and larceny blend thanks to you awesome good i i am gonna fill up a whole bottle of that soon not a whole bottle necessarily but i'm gonna actually do like a, a for real blend of that drinking the good stuff vicariously through you and chad and sarah yeah i'm uh <laughs> sorry about that really like what fred had to say about your interviewing skills thank you thank you man i i appreciate that yeah i um I started to realize that more and more that and it's it's not so much like me, how I interview people as much as it is just kind of the way that I have conversations. And when I when I do interviews like the ones that I do or that I do on the podcast, most of them I don't have planned out. I have a couple of touching points that I want to or talking points that I want to touch on. But for the most part, what I'd like to do is see where the conversation goes. And, you know, when I have people like Fred Minnick on, it, it just goes so well. I mean, they want to talk about stuff. And I just, I think that they're, you know, I'm only as good as the person that I'm interviewing. And I've been very lucky to have great interviewees on the show so far. So thank you, Brett. Thank you, Fred Minnick too. Um, drink. Yeah. Sorry. I touched my hair. Uh, new blend has been Elijah Creek barrel proof and foolproof. I highly recommend. Awesome. Uh, Dad, see you soon, I guess. Um, how was that brunch at Kuvion afterwards? So good, dude. So good. I had, what did I have? Um, a smoked sausage sandwich. Oh, fantastic. I highly recommend Kuvion to anybody who's in Louisville. Um, Jed and Sarah got me thinking of uh, with their barrel proof blind. Very nice. Yeah. Yeah, that's a great episode, by the way. Go check out um, Chad and Sarah. I mention them all the time. If you don't follow them or watch their stuff, it's at uh, it's Bourbon Night over on YouTube and go follow them and everything. Um, organic discussion is easier to listen to and it shows. Yeah, mm -hmm. I agree. Um, Booker's never shows up. I know you said it a hundred times, but how do you become a patron? Patreon.com slash my bourbon podcast. And uh, Big Feats, I'll... I'll message you a link to that if you are interested in it um i have you know i keep touching my beard see what happens see what happens also i'm wearing my um it's my bourbon podcast t-shirt so <laughs> um yeah uh, i i'll send that to you if you're interested we have a whole bunch of audio content that's up there as well so oh press man cheers to you my friend welcome in um I uh, Jason, that is very awesome of you. Good on you, mate. And my the fact that I listen to Australian podcasts just came through <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> yeah, shout out to the whiskey gallery, by the way. Um one of the best uh, Facebook groups. I've ever been a part of and um yeah great guys over there joe green who is in the chat of course um helped start that and get it going and it's been a lot of fun that was a great cork pop <sighs> cool what was my wife's name again lucy lucy is my wife's name she's downstairs um i would call her up but she doesn't always like being on camera so soon though I will have to have her back on. Okay, so I am moving on to putting it back on was rough. I am moving on to this Four Roses single barrel pick that was picked by Brent Elliott, their master distiller for the gift shop. And uh, that's there. Uh, is she cooking dinner right now? No, she's not cooking dinner right now. Last week was a weird... Um, 
thing. We went, we went house hunting last week. And so we didn't get home until late. And, uh, that, that's why she was cooking dinner, um, you know, at nine o'clock, but no, we, we before I'm up here, which is probably for the better so that I can drink more bourbon. Smash the like button. Yes, please. Does she drink bourbon? No, <laughs> no, she does not drink bourbon very much. I try to get her to um, try new things that I think she will like, and it doesn't always work out. She is actually more of a rye person than she is a bourbon person. So she typically likes higher rye bourbons uh, as, as opposed to lower rye or weeded. But that's just how she is. What's up with all the birthday presents behind you? Those are not birthday presents. They are just bags for birthday presents. This is not only... some Someday what I'll do is I'll do a little... Mm, no, I won't. Because this is also <laughs> Lucy's closet. <laughs> uh, this is my office and our, our storage slash closet room. So um, the it, what you see here and here is about as much as you're going to actually see of this room. Unless you come over and, and sit down with me. But even then... Um, Drink old fashions, yes. Turkey. Um, I, you know what? I don't know if I've actually had her try turkey before. Uh, is that for roses? Pick one hundred proof or barrel proof? It is one hundred proof, and you don't normally see single barrel picks of the one hundred proof, but when you do, pretty good, not bad. Yeah. What recipe for roses? It's the OBSV, so the high rye and fruity. Excuse me. Woof. Womp womp. Yeah, um, she likes she likes gin a lot. She loves gin, and she makes a killer gin and tonic. And her, if you've listened to the show, you know her dad Brett has has been on before, and he's a mixologist, and they are great at collaborating and come up with some fantastic drinks. So that's yeah, that's that. Wait for the new house. Yes, the new house is coming in the near future, in the next couple of months. So we will have an actual recording space that is not just <laughs> my spare room. It will be, well, maybe a spare room, but it will it will be a it'll be like a good space where I can actually show you around and show you the house and everything. Um, McKenna 10, because it's bottle of bond. Yes, drink. Sorry. Squared an OESK in Florida last Christmas. Barrel proof. Very nice. Good evening, Perry. Good evening, 4x4U TV. Welcome in to the chat. You mean he's a bartender? No. He... So he's not a trained bartender, necessarily, but he has done all the research and the practice and the reading of books and and basically you know he could he could be a bartender he would just have to get his bartending license so he does all of that stuff just without actually being an official bartender who gets paid for that job so yeah uh do love a gin and tonic summer in a glass yeah i so i'm not um you know like i i like bourbon of course more than i do anything but you know she makes such a good gin and tonic that if i'm in the, if I'm in the mood i will definitely drink it tended bar for almost 20 years joseph i might have to have you make me a drink sometime then I have four picks of four roses both k's and q's one of these days planning to blend them against each other yes do that two brian's in here by the way brian brenna k and brian oliver This one is really fruit forward. It's this, it's really raspberry y. And the rye spice isn't as prominent as you would expect it to be based on the recipe, but it's still there. It's still definitely, you know, you can still definitely pick up on it. It's just that it's not as, you know, it's not as aggressive as some of the fruits are on it. Four Roses Ellie at Costco last week. Oh, you grabbed it last week at Costco. Awesome. I have a buddy who has a bottle waiting for me, so I'm going to be getting that very soon. Very soon. Just got the new ECBP C18 today. Going to blind all three of them this year. Going to be a long night. <laughs> yeah, we're going to do an episode soon where we um, 
do a flight of all three Elijah Craig barrel proof releases from this e from this year. Excuse me. Um, yeah, I'm glad he's on it too because I cannot keep up with it. <laughs> Stay hydrated. Hey, I put bourbon and coffee the other day. I love bourbon and coffee. I love it. I love bourbon cream and coffee. I think bourbon and coffee though is particularly fantastic. A great night. Yes, he will have. 130 is steep. Did grab a C918 at Total Wine for 52. Man, Total Wine and their prices, I tell you. I, they um, got it figured out until they realized how much money they're losing. But that's another conversation for a different time. Um, <laughs> A118 just showed up in your area. Wow. Yeah. Uh, didn't I do an episode recently where I... Didn't I do an episode recently where I did the uh, the Elijah Craig barrel proofs back to back to back? I can't remember. I've, I've, you know, I'll do I'll do it again soon. And drink. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> bourbon cream with root beer is amazing. Yes, it is, especially if you have the Buffalo Trace bourbon cream. And Freddie, the man Johnson, will you know support that too. Perfect. Yes, on purpose it seems. Yeah. So I, I mean. Total Wine has their whole price set up because they try to get people in to, you know, become loyal customers. And unfortunately, what that entails is them losing a large chunk of money in a quarter. And after that, they have to raise their prices. They have to, because if they don't, they're just going to keep losing money. So what you see is people get hooked on total wine and the fact that they can get wild turkey 101 for $17 a bottle um fireball and hot chocolate really mm. yeah um but they get people hooked on their prices and as as soon as you know they see that they're losing that money, they hike them back up, and that's just kind of how it is. So you know, it is what it is. Business is business, but I would rather support a local business. That's just me. Um. So Perry, hi Jason, is all the Heaven Hill bottled and bond all gone off the shelves now in Kentucky? Not all of it. Um. I saw a little bit of it recently, but I haven't been, I haven't been picking it up like I need to. Um, I know a couple people that need me to save them one or two bottles. I am good as far as holding on to these bottles goes, but there it, it is dwindling. I mean, all the places that I normally went to where it was, it's not there anymore, but liquor barn still has a couple of bottles here and there. So yeah. Uh, that's cheap. I can't get a 750 for that price. Yeah. Um, 20 bucks now. F is for fireball. <laughs> Party source had some for 18. Sadly, our liquor tax is 30, 30%. Whew. Whew. That sucks. No, thank you. No, thank you to that. I do not like that at all. No, Joseph is over in California. No, Washington State. Excuse me. Yes. See, I corrected myself. How about that? Um, <laughs> that's crazy. So, Ed, for anybody who doesn't know, um, I am a, I'm also I'm a musician, and I did the, um, you know, the theme song for my show and everything, and um. I, I wrote a I wrote a jingle for a, another podcast that's it's going to be coming out tomorrow. It's a show called Do Go On, and um, they do reports every week. They're out of Australia, and I did a jingle for one of their segments. So that's it's actually going to be in it tomorrow. They just emailed me back. That's why I, you know, um, brought that up. So anyway, uh, fortunately, my wife is a doctor. Look at you. 
Uh, you can use power. Wasn't that fireball according to your dad, Perry? Yes. Yep. <laughs> um, so this is going to be a, well, Turkey Kentucky Spirit pick from the Turkey Gift Shop that I got. And I'm kind of switching gears here in terms of flavor profile because we're going, well, I guess I'm not really at all. I started saying that and then realized that that is not the case at all because I'm going from a higher rye to a higher rye. So, and man, this nose is incredible. Yeah. Uh, we just all need to send Joseph stuff. Yes, we do. Boone County cream is the best cream. I have not had it yet. I would love to, though. Aren't they repackaging in a new bottle? Yeah, they are, unfortunately. And it's actually going to be the shape of the Russell's single barrel bottle or Russell's small batch or whatever. But it's still going to be Kentucky Spirit. They're just doing away with this bottle shape, which I think, which I think is kind of stupid. I mean, I think that this bottle shape is iconic and stands out. So that's just me. Yeah, freaking love Russell's, man. Turkey Kentucky Spirit is best bottle to make a lamp. I between that and like maybe a Michter's bottle or Blanton's, but I, I totally get that. I have a not so good Kentucky Spirit right now. Mind up might end up going with me to poker next poker night. Yeah. Boone County 13. Ooh, I love the 12 year, so I would definitely want to try that. I have heard that wild turkey, uh, wild turkey Kentucky Spirit is hit or miss. What are your thoughts? Yeah, pretty much the same. I, 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 I mean, they're good, but I think that some of them just aren't as good as others. Of course. This one, though, this one is awesome. Very barrel forward, very fruit forward. The rice mingles very rice. The rye mingles very nicely. Could you imagine a rice bourbon? I bet that would be gross. Um, the rye mingles very nicely with everything else. That's what I was doing. I, I mixed up. I wound up combining rice and rye. Or rye and whatever. Didn't matter. Having a Kentucky spirit that is surprisingly better with water doesn't happen often. Five fifty a gallon. Holy crap. Oh. Um, yeah, hit, hit the like button, please. Thank you, Louie. I appreciate that. The nose is not as good. I will say that much, but it does kind of have a hint of like a big piece of barrel chunk from it, but it's still, it's still good. It's just not my favorite. I'm excited for moving on to this Russell's single barrel, though, because it's one of my favorite single barrels I've ever had. But that's just, you know, just how it is, y'all. Y'all have any questions or anything? I'm just kind of, uh, you know, spalling, rolling through here tonight. I'm really excited for, I, I, I want to talk to you about, um, I'm really excited for moving. <laughs> As when when I move, I like I said, I'm gonna have like a dedicated space to recording and to being able to put up all my bourbon bottles. And like this back here, of course, is not it. What you can't see is my desk, which is littered with bourbon bottles. And then there's some downstairs as well. And Lucy's getting frustrated with me <laughs> with all that I have but I am um, I'm really looking forward to having a good good space for it um had to switch to my 1792 so good good love Russell single barrels very consistently good I think so too um Russell's is one of those where I've kind of you know had to teach myself to really like it and once I once I did, I really do appreciate it now too. Am I ready to smoke some cigars? I could use a cigar. I haven't had one in a while, and um, you know uh, the Turkey Gift Shop actually sells some that are 
uh, aged in in bourbon barrels, which I would really like to grab a couple of. So, um, what zip you hunting? I don't understand the question, and I won't respond to it. Name that name that show. Rass, uh, last Russell single barrel I bought keeps getting better every time I pour it. Good. Rosemont Garden is nice. Um, oh, for my home uh, in in Lexington. Sorry, didn't understand. Um, yeah, we're looking we're looking at Lexington. We're in uh, Richmond right now. Um, am I going to the Frankfurt Bourbonanza on the twentieth? Had not planned on it, but I would really like to. Well, that sounds awesome. When is White Dog Day, by the way? Is that this week? Oh, shoot, I think White Dog Day is this week. Scar sounds good. Yes. Mm. A very good bottle of Kentucky Spirit. I will say that much. Um, uh, zip code in Lexington. Uh, we don't really have a specific one right now. We're just kind of trying to feel out where our, our budget fits the best right now. Uh, good thing you found me a whiskey row cigar. Joseph. Joseph. My man. Cigar and as we speak. And everybody drink, yes. Uh, was there anything about the interviews with Freddie Johnson or Mr. Minnick that surprised you? Um, that is a really good question. Freddie is exactly how you would expect him to be. I, I, I mean, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna go ahead and say it. He is the nicest, kindest, most gentle and welcoming soul I think I've ever met in my entire life. And he may not remember everybody's name. He may not remember that he's, you know, that he's taught you what he has, that he's been a part of your life. But it doesn't matter because every time that you talk to him, it feels like family. So I met him before Bourbon and Beyond, but he was the... <clears throat> I'll always feel like I can approach Freddie anywhere. I really, I really will. Let me chug my water real quick. Fred, on the other hand, Fred Minnick. Um, yes, he is the Mr. Rogers of Bourbon. <laughs> I agree with that wholeheartedly. Fred Minnick, on the other hand, is also incredibly nice. I mean, really, I am so thrilled every time that I get to see him and talk to him. And and one of the things, so the the first time that I chatted with Fred was back in March, I think, March or April. And that was for the first Bourbon and Beyond preview episode. And he was a little bit, standoffish it was a little bit hard to get to talk with him but i was very candid in my conversation with him i was very honest in my conversation with him and that seemed to strike a strike a bit of a nerve with him it seemed to hit something and i th i thought that was you know, at the time, and incredible that he was just willing to talk with me about things that I'd never heard him talk about before. And after that first encounter, and I, and and in March, I was just five months into the podcast. We're in in the you know the twelfth month. We're about to hit our year anniversary, and I've done a whole lot with the show in a year. And the second time I met with him, it was at his office. And, you know, that's an episode that's out, too. And he was very gracious. He was very welcoming. He signed every single one of his books <laughs> for me, which was 
crazy. Um, and and that was the first time too that he told me how how good of an interviewer he thought I was. I was like, oh, okay, this guy who you know gets interviewed all around the world by different people. And saying that he he said that to me, and then when yeah, I, I and I'm sorry that I'm going on this whole diatribe too about, but I I this is such a poignant thing for me because I haven't ever really talked in depth about this to anybody who's not my family or Lucy or anybody. And at Bourbon and Beyond, you know, we had the media passes and everything. We felt all official. And Fred just, you know, I was, I came up to him just to say, hey. And one of the first things out of his mouth were, I am so proud of you. He's like, look at how far you've come already. And I was like, okay. <laughs> You know, it was just another reason to keep doing what I'm doing. And I have, you know, I, I have not wanted to stop doing this. And I never will want to stop doing this because this is my favorite, you know, of course, aside from seeing my wife and, you know, get, getting to, you know, interact with family and friends and everything. This is my favorite part of my week. This is the thing I look forward to every day is that I get to drink bourbon and talk about it with people who uh, appreciate it and love it. And, you know, I will not stop doing this. I won't stop doing this, you know. So that's just, you know, I, 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 I know I went a little bit further than what you were... <laughs> <laughs> you're originally asking Jason, but yeah, if, if anything surprised me about my interview with Fred Minnick, it was just that he, that he cared honestly, and that he remembered. Um, so yeah, that's it. Let's drink some bourbon. Let's say cheers to that. Oh, that nose is so good. It's like maple syrup and pancakes. What's the proof on this? 110? I'll tell you, it doesn't drink like 110. So, yeah. Cheers. Cheers, guys. And again, I want to say, too, it goes back to, you know, having having people that support me and, and want to be a part of this and everything. Because you guys, you know, fine. Um, you, you make... You make doing this every week, every day, worth it. And you make it fun. And I'm, I'm not going anywhere. I'm not going anywhere. I'm moving house, but I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> this Russell's Reserve, though. This is incredible. Um... You hear a, you see a hair slightly out of place. Now it's more out of place, so now I have to fix it again later. I have like Wolverine hair going on on one side, maybe both sides actually. I don't know. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm gonna pour a little bit more of this though. Um, anybody have any questions that aren't as um, deep as? <laughs> what i just got into <laughs> uh which rick house this is rick house oh yeah um floor three barrel 2234 personally selected by bhg this was their 46th pick and they are shoot what number are they on right now i can't remember doesn't matter um Anyway, great pick. I love Warehouse K. I think Warehouse B is really good, too. Um, but this is a good one. Um, <laughs> uh, hey, Jason, it's all good, buddy. 
It's all good. Look at it this way. We are generations of drinkers. We need individuals to pass along in each generation to keep it going. I'm the next ambassador for the coming generations. And that's another thing that keeps me going, too, is that I, I want to continue this legacy, and I don't want to see another bourbon collapse, I guess. And I think I, it's not that I feel like I have a duty to it, but you know, somebody's got to care and I care and I want to, I want to continue caring and, and showing people that feeling too. Um, is Elijah Craig barrel proof ready available in Kentucky? Like if I drive there to buy it, Nope, <laughs> it is not. It is not readily available in Kentucky. I struggle to find it, but when I do, I buy it. So, um, how high is wild Turkey Rick house? I heard eight. That sounds about right. I would say six or eight. That that seems like like it'd be true. Um, Perry is the coming generation. I think I'm here. <laughs> oh, Leanne's here. Hello. Okay, so um, something just got... Um, spilled and broken downstairs so i think i need to go actually unfortunately but um real quick um oh i watched an horror movie no real quick um at my bourbon pod on instagram facebook and twitter new episode coming out tomorrow um on wherever you get your podcast um Become a patron at patreon.com slash my bourbon podcast. Um, like and subscribe and all that good stuff. I will see you guys next week. But until then, I'm Perry. This is my bourbon podcast live stream. <laughs>